The club is calling. Cronin Club. eStories is one of the biggest suppliers of audio books. Uh, that's right, the books that are in audio form so you can listen to them instead of read them. Many of us do this now, not with, not all the time. I mean, sometimes we do want to read, but eStories is one of the most unbelievable websites for audiobooks, and now they're going to give you guys, listeners of the Joe Cronin Show, one free audiobook. Even if you've signed up on other websites before, there's nothing like eStories. So in the link in the description box down below, you'll see the, the name eStories free audiobook. Click on that link. It will take you to the website. Using that link, you will get one free audiobook. No matter what, you get one free on eStories, guys. So go down in the description box, check it out, and also you'll be supporting the Joe Cronin Show when you do it. So download, download a book, listen to it. Sci-fi, sports, wrestling, space, science, news, political, whatever it is, whatever kind of books you like to hear or read, there's a free audiobook for you. What's up, wrestling fans, and welcome to State of the WWE Episode 92. Bunch of shit to talk about today, but first I want to direct you down below into the description box where my Amazon link is there. If you buy anything on Amazon, use my link. I will get credit for it. Use my Amazon link below. Plus, check out eStories. You guys get a free audiobook from eStories. The link is also in the description box down below. Listen to uh, a wrestling book or a sci-fi book or whatever you want. It's free. It's on us and eStories. Check out the link below. Literally nothing you have to do but go there and download the free book. Um, yeah, so I don't know exactly where to start. Last video I made was about Braun Strowman. I said that he should never back down from anything. We have a lot of stuff to talk about here. Ryback's comments, uh, you know, yeah, the Hardys. I, mean, I can people. start us off with, with Braun Strowman. That's a, that's a great talking yeah. point. Um, Sports Kitas and a few others are reporting the reason why Strowman destroyed Roman Reigns. And apparently it's because WWE is planning something in advance for once. Long-term booking, guys. We don't, we don't hear that term often in the company anymore. But as things currently stand, Strowman is expected to, ready for this, defeat Roman Reigns at Payback Sunday. I know. Wow. I'm shocked, too. I thought he was going to lose. But apparently their plan, as reported here, is for Brock Lesnar to go against Braun Strowman in around June or July. So you figure that would work out in the timeline because we have after payback, we have backlash. And then, you know, we have, uh, what is it, money in the bank after that. So we know that um, Brock Lesnar will be returning to defend the title around that point. He has to do it in, I think they said, a 60-day time span. So that works out. So according to Dave Meltzer, WWE will play up the story of Reigns returning prematurely from injury in order to protect him and make the big dog still look strong. So you're going to say uh, that he's still too injured to have come back. It's too soon. And he is expected to heavily sell his injuries during the match at Payback. I don't see Roman selling often or before, so it's going to be interesting to see that. But... <laughs> Uh, yeah, that you know. will be cool. Uh, it'll be interesting if that's what happens. Uh, that will be kind of a shock in a way. But I'm I'll, enjoying Braun more and more. Good. Oh, I, yeah, I, I love Braun, so I mean, I hope it does happen. I wasn't crazy about the dumpster match last night that, that you know, conducted on Raw. Yeah. But, I, I mean, it's still, you know, I don't really think it hindered Braun's character, though. I just said that it, I, I said in my last video that it was just dumb that he fell into it. The rules changed. We didn't know. He rolled the thing up. Nothing. He dumped it off two feet. I mean, he should have, like, done, he should have been consistent with his insanity. Like, he should have just thrown Callisto through the dumpster or into the dumpster to win, closed the lids, then dragged them up, then thrown them off, then rolled the dumpster to the back. Then, exactly. He should not have lost. Then they should have gone to commercial break, and they should have came back where, where Braun now was rolling the dumpster like the, on the wheels again in the back, and then he should have thrown it or or drove a truck into it or something terrible. Like maybe not. Yeah, th thrown him off the loading dock. Yeah, you know, again, again or something yeah. like that. But the two, you know, two feet off the off the stage was. You know, it'd been great. To... You know, it'd have been really great. This is what I would have done. This would have been great if, if Braun Strowman uh, had once he had um, Callisto in the fucking in the dumpster. If he had been, if he had grabbed something flammable, and um, of course, it, after, you know, when they go to the break. You know, Braun's pulling around, but he's not really in the dumpster anymore. And um, 
and he lights the thing on fire. And oh, then, yeah. And then he stands over the dumpster, like, and then he throws the dumpster off the thing. And then, you know, right after he lights it on fire, he gets a few seconds, like, looking into the dumpster that's on fire, and, like, they get a good shot of him. And <laughs> it'd just be great if Braun Strowman said, because it's funny when Strowman just yells dumb, like, Neanderthal things. And this kind yeah, of, those th- obscene sayings. <laughs> yeah, if he just went, like, play with fire and you get burned <laughs> you know just like <laughs> stupid shit like that like yeah like i or, or just him just even if he just said i like fire <laughs> like <laughs> that type of stuff is hilarious like and they should oh, just yeah. i scorched you you know something yeah. stupid and it would have been perfect uh and you know the, yeah they have i would have preferred that over the little tumble that he took in a padded garbage can you know it would have been it wasn't even a dumpster it was a garbage can with pads inside if he had done what i just said it would have been all the like rage like everyone would have been talking about it. the dumpster thing was kind of like talked about a little bit but it was like eh. and people like jeered it and stuff sort of for being lame you know yeah. so maybe some Do you casuals... Randy Orton lit the casket on fire with the undertaker inside were you watching at that point i remember when kane lit the casket on fire with the undertaker inside yeah well randy orton did it and then at survivor series undertaker came back with a flaming casket and came out of it and you know they could have even done something similar esque to that you know oh, gave his uh his win back but you know it, it's just it it just felt poorly thought out like it was just very rushed and they they basically i you know what they, you like know what, they saw you, the reaction can I go back? on the internet last week let me go back again too jake if they had done that and you know as soon as you know the dumpster's on fire for a few seconds then he throws it off the ledge then people rush over and start even though Callisto's not really in the dumpster people start running over and they start spraying the fire extinguishers everywhere and then later on the Callisto's going to the hospital and stuff and then what i would have done is Callisto now has these burns or something on his body, so he has to oh, wear this. Yeah. He's got to wear this big bandaging thing or whatever. So then, what I do is I get I get Callisto in the back, and you know he ends up having to wrestle somebody, and whoever he wrestles, just he that person like starts to rip his bandages off or something. He does something to him, and he gets in a feud with somebody. So now Callisto gets in a feud with somebody, and he's got these bandages. And either during the match leading up to their feud, or or in or in the main event of the feud, or whatever the culmination of it, have the guy ripping off. I would say leading up to the feud, have the guy rip off his bandages and expo- that exposed burn. And you could tell a whole story that like, like how dastardly was the Miz or whoever the hell like, you know that 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 exposed burn that sin area of Callisto and then the guy is like you know like dumping salt on him and stuff and like doing something terrible to Callisto and now he, Callisto has a rivalry with someone completely different and it relates to that injury like and that's how you build off of multiple things and why they don't do that bl- blows me away because now what are they going to do you know he, he's going to just be back at some point and be okay or he'll be exactly. I know he might be changing character a little bit I heard that he won't have the mask anymore Maybe this will lead to that too. So then they are double storing it up, but they really should have gone into like, oh, he's got the burn, and you know they should have given him a win back against an evil villain of some sort or or whoever the fuck. I can't even think of the roster right now who who would be the person to oppose him. But I mean, um, they, they can even do it like Apollo Cruz or somebody. But uh, realistically, though, you know, the only reason they had this dumpster match is because so many people tweeted at WWE where it was trending. You know, with the dumpster line last week with him calling Kalisto trash. He's, you know, whatever the line was, I forget. He's like, oh, you were trash, and, you know, when he threw him in the dumpster. Which was great, yeah. Which was great, yeah. I love that line. So everybody was so captivated by his, his like you said, Neanderthal-esque catchphrase yeah. that, you know, people were all for it. Um, but that, I think, is the only reason they ended up having the dumpster match. Obviously, it wasn't something pre-planned, and it just felt rushed, you know? There was well, no no impact to him pushing him gently off I'm the not stage. so sure it wasn't so, sort of pre-planned, because, I mean, they knew Reigns wasn't going to be here, so he was going to work with Kalisto. Or he was going to work I, I with somebody. he was definitely going to have somebody, but, I mean, you go from destroying the ring to the ring breaking and walking out looking like a total badass to gently tumbling somebody off the stage, you know? Like, yeah. it just... Or flipping an ambulance. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's a pretty good. It's a good little effort by them. I'm just surprised that they didn't know to go full on. Like they should have done well, what I said. The stage is so low now. You know, it, it it's not as impactful as it used to be. I was there when the Dudley Boys put May Young through the table. You know, and they had that huge, like six, seven foot incline from oh, the yeah. stage to the table. You know, that was ridiculous. That, that was, was insane. so 
holy fuck moment. Like, it, it was so out there. You're taking an 80-year-old woman and spiking her through a table. You know, and I now would, you're getting Kalisto gently tumbled. <laughs> and I, would, I mean, I would have said if I was May Young, too, I'd be like, you know what? If I die doing this, it's better than dying of pancreatic cancer in a year or whatever. I mean, I don't know what yeah, she... Exactly. I, I don't remember what she actually died of. You know, God rest her soul. And I love May Young. Um, I don't remember what she actually died of. But if, but if I'm an old person, if I'm like 88 years old, like the older I get, the more chances I'm going to take. Like when I when my kids are like 30, if I can make it that age, if I can make it to 60, 70 or 80, and like, you know what I mean? I, I'm going to take so many chances. Like I'm going to be like, I'm going to fly. I don't give a shit where. I'll go anywhere. I'm gonna okay, be... kids. Grandpa's going to go a barbed wire match. So uh, you guys have fun now. <laughs> what? Yeah. I, you know I... what? If there was YouTube. Oh, grandpa. If there was YouTube, I would be. I definitely be that guy. I would have. I would literally have a barbed wire match against the bear, and I would like cut myself open and shit. Like, and there would people just be like, "Oh my god, look at this crazy old fucking asshole!" Like, what is this? Uh, yeah, really. Connor from OK Fabe is back. We lost him right as we started, and uh, just want to let everybody know he is here. So, Connor from OK Fabe, check him out on YouTube at youtubecom slash Faber uh, and hit him up on Twitter. And uh, Jake Demarco is here as well. And uh, we just talked a bunch of shit about the uh, Braun Strowman stuff. Yeah, basically, um, just just to recap, you know, they're saying that Roman's going to lose after selling his injuries. You know, they're going to say he came back too soon, and then eventually Braun will challenge for the title, yeah. which I'm happy with. I'd like to see Braun as champion. I don't think it's too soon at all, and uh, I think this could definitely make a, a true, you know, high caliber main event match. Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar, I'd, I'd be happy to see that, and I'm not a big Brock fan either, so. Well, they teased that on the Raw after Mania, where they had yep. like the little like they almost kissed, and uh, <laughs> that, uh, that. But I mean, that that was exciting for me. I'm like, I'm not. I'm not usually big. I'm not usually a huge fan of super heavyweights fighting. Yeah, but damn, either. I'll be very interested in a Brock uh, Strowman match. To be honest with you, uh, but I was I was kind of chiming in on like what, what Jake like half of what Jake was saying when I was able to hop back on, and I do kind of agree. Like I felt like the whole like dumpster thing is a little backwards. And on top of that, so we have Braun Strowman flipping a goddamn ambulance. We have him <laughs> gently, uh, you know, tossing a well, I shouldn't say gently, but tossing a cruiserweight f- two feet off of a stage. And then we're going to get a normal match between him and Roman at Payback? I, I, I feel like <laughs> yeah, it should have it a stipulation. Yeah, Absolutely. It, that's, that's one thing. I, I was going to say this on my predictions video later on this week, but like that's one of my biggest gripes is that we already had the normal match at Fastlane. There's already history there. He flips him over in an – I can't stress how like big <laughs> of a deal that is, even in, K, in freaking kayfabe. Why is this Did like – hear- and now you're going to have a match. E-Stories is one of the biggest suppliers of audio books. Uh, that's right, the books that are in audio form so you can listen to them instead of read them. Many of us do this now, not with, not all the time. I mean, sometimes we do want to read, but E-Stories is one of the most unbelievable websites for audiobooks, and now they're going to give you guys, listeners of The Joe Cronin Show, one free audiobook. Even if you've signed up on other websites before, there's nothing like eStories. So in the link in the description box down below, you'll see the the name eStories free audiobook. Click on that link. It will take you to the website. Using that link, you will get one free audiobook. No matter what, you get one free on eStories, guys. So go down the description box, check it out, and also you'll be supporting the Joe Cronin Show when you do it. So download download a book, listen to it. Sci-fi, sports, wrestling, space, science, news, political, whatever it is, whatever kind of books you like to hear or read, there's a free audiobook for you. Did you hear what I said? What? Did you hear what I said? I said that um, that he should have power bombed Kalisto through the dumpster to win, then pushed it up the thing, thrown it off, then rolled it into the back. Go to commercial, come back to him rolling the dumpster in the back, light the dumpster on fire, throw it off the edge thing again. Uh, people run up, and now by then Kalisto's out of the dumpster. He's not even in it. Uh, he's they, got yeah, burns, they, you know, they, following weeks. Yeah, the next week he's got that. burns. That's a big sympathy card. Now Kalisto, I, I, thought for, I thought for sure he was going to flip another ambulance because they showed like they're like we're back live, we're watching Kalisto getting carted in the ambulance. Yeah. Like, not again. Flip one. Not again. Flip one I thought on it was going to go Kalisto. that way for a second too. Flip one on to Kalisto. Like, they're like, bro, no, stop, take him out, let him out. Take him out, okay. He just tossed him like a sexy pinata. I'll take him out. <laughs> like, somebody, it'd be funny if, I mean, like, they really need to play up on Braun's Neanderthal, like, one-liners. Like, they need to be like, Braun, he needs to go to a hospital, Braun. And then Braun needs to say, okay, I'll, I'll, you know, he needs to get in an ambulance, Braun. We need to get him in an ambulance. Braun, please, he needs an ambulance. Oh, give him an ambulance. <laughs> then he pulls him out of the dumpster, then, then throws the ambulance on to Kalisto. 
Yeah. Every, oh my god. Every every but week is you are right. Just gets worse. <laughs> yeah. Just, just continually, but you know, the, regresses. The, the point is, then when Braun goes back to feuding with whoever else he's feuding with next week, he's done with Kalisto. When Kalisto returns in two weeks or whatever it is, he has like wrappers all over him, like he has burn marks. And whoever he gets in a feud with can, you know, in their match, can do something dashly and rip the thing, the bandages off. And, st- and then now they've got this gimmick of Kalisto and the bandages and this other guy, and maybe they have a gimmick match. I mean, I don't know. So, like, it could have led to so many different things, but they didn't even, it's just kind of going to be wasted, it feels like. Yeah, it was just a throwaway to build up Braun again, which again, like you know, kind of like what Jake was saying, it's a little backwards. It's just you yeah. like the it's, whole it's Jake cool. Roberts. There, there's aspects of it that I thought were they were well done, but just if you just switched up the order a little bit, like honestly, and even with the concept of just Raw in general last night, I felt that that should have closed the show, even oh, as yeah. as as like iffy as it was, as far as like again, like the the two foot drop, the step basically that it was. Yeah, uh, I think that should have closed out Raw, not necessarily what we got at the end. And I'm very confused too. Oh, actually, well, before I get into that, um, you you know, Reigns has got what a separated shoulder and kayfabe land and cracked ribs, and yet he's going to recover in time for a match at Payback. So if he was able to be yeah, they need Braun to tone it down this with coming those Sunday, then diagnosed. it's going to be the biggest travesty in, in wrestling history. Do you, do you remember? Do you remember when The Rock got run over by a semi in an ambulance <laughs> yes. and he came back? To, what was it like? Fourteen days later, and he's like. Oh, I've got a couple of bandages on my... Ri- really? Oh, yeah. He has really? just the, the wrap on there, the ace bandage wrap. Cena got run over by JBL head first by a limo. I'm remembering all this stuff now. And yeah. it's like, next week, I don't, even, I don't even think Cena came out with any bandages or Nobody anything. Cared. Like, Nobody cared. Oh, uh, there's like... Cena. <laughs> what? Wait. Didn't Stone Cold drop that, aren't we? Triple H, too? Wasn't that? Like, yeah. They, they, they lifted a car and dropped it. Yeah, he's like, don't do that, Steve. Right, you're going to regret this. Yeah. Yeah, Triple H was like, you're going to regret this the rest of your life. And it was like, Triple H actually had a point. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he was like the heel. <laughs> and here's this the face, like, about to murder somebody. And yeah, it was really. like, you know, he, Triple H might have a point, you know. And, but then he dropped him. And then I think I think Triple H was back the next week. So it was yeah, like, he, it wasn't it wasn't long after. Um, I, I thought they were going to have but, a funeral for him or something, but they didn't do it. Yeah, well, we've seen how Triple H and uh, funerals go. So, Katie Vick aside, it, it's just I'm <laughs> confused inside. at this point what they were trying to <laughs> what they were trying to accomplish last night with the main event. As you said, it should have been the dumpster match. Connor's right because the Miz said, the... "Here comes my partner. I have my partner." No one came out, and I'm like, "Did they have something planned that didn't work out, or was like Bray not ready?" Or like... well, they just wanted the surprise, you know, the guy to come out and be a surprise. But it was Bray, so it was just like, they... but Bray Dude. didn't come out until after the match. Was you know like, what? You know, you know why you saw that shit last so. night because they knew they were in Kansas. I swear to God, WWE knows where they are. They know where they are every show, and they just book for the place they're at. They're like Kansas. Let's do this stupid shit. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but do they forget that they have, you know, people watching at home, too? I guess It's not so. just about the live crowd? I don't know. I, I just I think, think I, that they do. I think they throw in the... T- I think they think, like, well, if we, even if we do amazing things, this crowd's going to... Re- reaction's going to be shit. You know what I mean? I mean, this is this is the worst review that I've had for Raw in weeks. I mean, it, yeah. pretty much all year. This this got a two for me. That that it last was, night it, was torturous. It was bad. it was very bad. And that's and, uh, and the funny thing is, you know, back in the day, it would be unheard of. I mean, that was, you know, to the to sell a pay per view. You know, that would normally be the show that's supposed to sell the pay per view. You know, the last reminder that hey, we're having. Hey, can you spend forty dollars on this pay per view because we're having a pay per view? Yeah, I I said this in my Raw review. I said you know, and I think we're all in the same agreements here that typically a Raw or SmackDown before a pay per view's job is to sell you on that pay per view, like Joe just said. And if anything, this made me less interested in the pay per view. To be totally yeah. honest with you, oh by far, yeah. there's no way you would yeah, buy. I forgot that it was even happening Sunday, and on then they pay- made me turned off from it. There's no on way. Paper, the payback card looks really decent, actually. Right. Aside from a couple things here and there, that doesn't look too bad. This is what but they do. Some, but, yeah, but for some reason, when after I got done with it, I'm like, I kind of don't want to watch payback now. This is such. Backwards this is business. this is what Raw does. This is what they've been doing. This has been the format the last year or something. It's like Raw sucks, but then the pay per view you still want to watch it, even though like you're you're still interested because the matches seem okay and whatever. But then Raw is just atrocious. But then SmackDown is the opposite. SmackDown is usually the show's pretty good or it's good enough, but then the pay per view isn't as good. It's, it's it's fucking ass backwards. SmackDown produces better. TV and not as better, not as well uh, pay-per-views. Uh, although I thought the Elimination Chamber was good, but uh, 
you know, so it's weird that it's backwards like that. SmackDown's always hovering around like a five, six, or seven, maybe an eight sometimes, and, and Raw is just at a one, two, three, four, five, and once in a while comes above that, if anything. And yeah, I mean, last week. Yeah, but SmackDown does bad, a better but... job of making me like the pay per views, though. Well, they, 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 they do, do a better, do a better job, job of hooking of... me in. Yeah, they do a better. Yeah, if you uh, if you said like, oh, there's no WWE Network, Joe. Um, there's only you have to pay sixty dollars for a pay per view. You know what I mean? And I and I only like let's say you capped me. Let's say you gave me, you know, you told me, Joe, you can only order five pay per views this year. You know, I mean, I would. Besides, you know, obviously like WrestleMania, SummerSlam, or whatever. I would probably the rumble. I would be picking SmackDown pay per views because based on the week to week content, I'd be like, oh, I want to see what happens with that story. Yeah, it's but more like, bang for your buck, really. What story right now? I mean, like it, it, the really the number one. I think the number one thing is Strowman and Reigns, and that's not even like done that well. That it's mostly because of, of Braun. I want yeah, to see I mean, Braun well, do anything. Does anybody care about the House of Horrors match? I mean, we want to see what happens and how it's going to be conducted. Yeah, that's but kind we of... We really don't care about the outcome. Do we? Yeah. 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 So, well, so apparently, I don't know if you caught this Ray on the commentary win, last night, but they said that it's going to be taped, or it's, yeah. it's going to be starting off in the House of Horrors and end in the ring. Right. Yeah, Corey Graves mentioned that, and that was pretty bizarre as well. Like, why tell what us they that? have planned here? Yeah, why even say it? Like, the intrigue behind the match and what was going to happen is, you know, that mysticism is basically out the window at this yeah, point. They, if you're going to have... It's basically used, a boiler room brawl. They used it to sell the show. Like, they literally gave the match, like, yeah, it should have been like, what is what is a House of Hard Horror match and what's going to happen in this? Guys, the WWE itself is a sponsored affiliate on the Joe Cronin Show. Well, let's face it, that's pretty freaking awesome. And speaking of freaking freaking awesome check out the wwe shop because right now guys the link is in the description box down below when you use the link you're gonna get the special deals on wwe shop so if you were ever gonna purchase anything wrestling oriented on the wwe website well use my link below because you'll save and we'll get credit here from the wwe and we'll get a pat on the back too and they might start to like us a whole lot more plus down below in the description box near the link i've also included my special coupon codes so not only can you save on that deal but you'll save with the coupon codes on the website as well thank you so much to the wwe and wwe shop guys the website is full of awesome stuff like title belts toy figures, t-shirts, and all kinds of other crazy memorabilia, and even awesome signed plaques, WWE ring pieces, signed autographs from Finn Balor, AJ Styles, you name it, it's all there, even Roman Reigns if you want. WWEshop.com, the link's in the description box down below on this video. Check it out. We get paid, you save, and you get some cool wrestling stuff. Thanks to the WWE. House of Horrors. Is it in the ring? Is it outside the ring? Is it outside the arena? We don't know. You know. I figured it was going to be like a final deletion type that match, sounds essentially. Like that doing. we were going to get like high production value outside of the arena type thing, like you know. But I, I guess now we know it's going to be essentially a backstage or boiler room brawl. I mean, that's that's basically what they're going for here. What are they going to do? Have them in the basement with a seance? You know. I mean, Jesus. I don't know. But uh, let's move and on. And it's not for the title. That's what I can't get over. I'm sorry. I know I'm trying yeah. to move on, but that just that bothers me so much. Bray, you know, said he, he wanted the title back, and then he literally just like, eh, not this time. Yeah, where's his? <laughs> did he get a rematch? No, it's, <laughs> he lost at Mania, and now he he said he's it's, he's you know decided not to go for the title. <laughs> oh boy, good job. What's WWE. strange is how this match was originally for the title, but now it's a non-title match, which means and he's going to win. WWE made this without. Any announcement, they just just is so put bad. It up, no it's, longer for the title. It's bad. It is really bad and lazy. They've and booked themselves into a horrible scenario. No matter what way you slice it, this whole it's thing just is horrible. Baffling. The whole House of Horrors is just Monday. What Monday Night Raw does every week. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's move to this fucking Ryback thing because I'm a little pissed off. I want to talk about this. Oh, this is this is infuriating. I mean, we'll, we'll let you. No, Skype just broke up. I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't want to cut you off. No, I didn't say anything. Um, yeah, Ryback is, is claiming that Jinder Mahal's new physique is not a result of diet and exercise. Now, uh, 
Right off the now bat, he says this. Right, right now Ryback says this, and didn't Ryback do something? I mean, mm. we. But anyway, I mean, there's no way that it could be, uh, you know, it could be uh, it all me. natural. It can't be the diet, man. It, it can't be. Me, I mean, Joe. if you use the, the feed me more diet, maybe that's the results you get, but not this way. <laughs> yeah, not with my, my supplement problem, plan that he has out. My know? anger with this is not that Ryback is wrong, because anybody looks at Jinder, you can tell there's been some sort of change. Now, what is he doing? We don't really know. I mean, when you start seeing, like, pimples and stuff all over people, it gets, you know, it's like, well, it's weird. Um, well, Ryback's focusing on the the breasts. You know, sure. he said that he has tits now, and that's the huge. Uh, well, that's estrogen. Then that's red not... flag. Well, that's that's something that they use, and and that doesn't get detected as much. Really? Yeah, there's a new type of of steroid, basically, and it uses a, a higher dose of estrogen to get the pituitary gland kicking up higher because your your body. Uh, Estrogen clings to fat cells, so if you give the body more estrogen, it produces more testosterone. Jesus, the doctors I don't know all the here. science the behind it. The fucking doctors here. I don't know. No, yeah, well, here, there's my, a lot to it. Endocrinologists have come up with some great stuff. So My problem <laughs> with this is Ryback. Is He's a hypocrite. Listen, the fact of the matter is Ryback right about this? Probably. Probably Ryback is right. Probably Ryback, And obviously Ryback has the right to say this. My problem with him is... This is the motherfucker who hates everybody else for disrespecting him for whatever the fuck. He, this guy gets mad at me for making some jokes. I try to apologize to him, and uh, you know what I mean? They're still shitting on me and making jokes. And you know what? And now he's just over there basically accusing a guy of being on steroids. Like, get the fuck out of here. This guy is the fucking hypocrite of the century. If I said on my show that, it, well, obviously Ryback is on something, or Ryback does something, or I called him steroid back or something, which I've, I haven't done, by the way. Um, I've never said anything like that. But if I just started saying Ryback was on something, or who knows what Ryback took, he would be furious. This guy would be wow, fucking he would crazy. Be right? This guy would fucking blow a fucking gasket. But he's over there talking shit about Jinder Mahal. So, see, for Ryback, he's a special snowflake, I guess. And anything he says about anybody else is okay because he's just talking about it on his show. He, he even said on his show, like, oh, I like, you know, I like Jinder and everything. It's like, well, you know what? Yeah, but he didn't even just, like, insinuate it or, like, tiptoe around it. Here's the exact quote. He said, speaking of tits, this is on his podcast, too, so it's not like it's a, a shoot or anything. He said, oh, who I noticed had tits this week on Raw? Jinder Mahal. He said, I noticed. They did a close-up of his fucking chest, and I just noticed right away. My I've never had, had that tits. or anything because I don't. And then he paused, and he said, like, there's no reason to. When you get uh, gyno, red flags right off the fucking bat, Dr. David Black. And then he said, Jesus Christ, that shit doesn't happen on its own. And I like Jinder and whatnot, and he looks great, but I am pointing out the obvious. That just doesn't fucking happen from fucking drinking your protein shakes. Listen, yeah. tits on guys are a great thing. I mean, why not, right? My mammy had <laughs> boobs just like that. Joe, my me, I would suckle, I would suckle those teats. Okay. I mean, there's not, there's nothing like, like hot, fresh man milk, and you can take it from anywhere you want. That's the best part is that there's you know multiple what? sources. Connor, you sound like more Ronaldo doing Ryback. I like Ryback. Like Ryback has a really bad cold. It's like I still like Ryback, but it's like he's just so ridiculous with how he gets mad at everybody else, but then he's allowed to just shit on things and whatever. It's like, dude. We everybody does this, but everybody that does it to him gets in trouble. I'm just calling him out for being a hypocrite. I think he's a giant fucking hypocrite. And, oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, and so there you go. I mean, big, you're a hypocrite, bro. Uh, and, yeah. and then come to find out, you know, you hear why New Japan doesn't want him, and you know why he hasn't. He's barely wrestled. You know, he's done more podcasts. Than you should hear the things people tell me and, about him. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I don't want to spread, you know, anything that's false, but I've heard so many stories and most of them seem legitimate. And obviously the biggest gripe that everybody has with Ryback at this point is that, you know, he's the creative genius behind every big thing in the last, you know, decade of WWE without being involved directly in any of it. You know, he, everything that that he says is basically, you know, came came from his mind. Everything was his own creation, came to fruition through his thoughts. You know, he's the one responsible for the shield He's the ones responsible for, you know, and so on and so forth. And, and he, you know, it's just lies. It's lies after lies. It compounds. And it's all just one big bullshit artist trying to make himself sound better than he actually is. I mean, I, I can actually prove the people that stole my gimmicks because I, I have the time stamps and then when they actually debuted. So, I mean, I can actually show people that. Um, but whatever. Um, who cares? Anyway, again, like, I, it's like weird because, like, I like 
I'd like him. I he sounds he's petty and jealous. He's he's just you know as far as the beginning of the month, he was bitching on on four and one mini about uh, Kevin Owens needing to work out more and improve his physique. Yeah, talk about that's jealousy speaking. You, you can't tell me that's not him being petty. Yeah, um, you know Kevin Owens wrestled for a long time and did a lot of amazing things in the ring. I think maybe Ryback should uh, watch some of Kevin Owens' videos. Plus his yeah. personality and his character and just the way like there's there's other there's other aspects of him that obviously made him successful. I would love to book obviously. Ryback if I was a promoter. I would book Ryback like right now. Like if I and if I was um, and honestly, to be honest, if Ryback didn't hate me, I mean, it's good that he does because I would book the, I would literally book him spearing me or something. Like I would love to, uh, you know, be at top rope promotions. And basically have somebody play like one of the worst things that we said about Ryback over the speakers while he's in the ring, uh, and be, and you know then just be like, well, you know, I said that Ryback, and I'd play the heel and everything, and I'd be like, you know, but I now you know obviously I was just kidding, you know. There, I mean, you know, you're not that bad in real life, you know. And people, ooh, like, and then you know Ryback spear me, you know, that would be great, you know. I mean, I just don't think we could afford Ryback to be honest. Um, well deserved. Did you ever find out what his asking price actually was? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what his real price is. I'll never know, I guess. That's why I always told people, like, oh, I don't know. We got a million dollars. We're never going to be able to book Ryback. He's worth a lot of money. Uh, I thought that was a compliment, though. Like, he's, he's the dude's worth a lot of money. I mean, uh, I was told uh, I was told a certain amount of money. I was told multiple different things, actually, to be honest. So that's why I never knew. So then I just told people, like, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000. I made up different things every second as a joke, you know? And that's right. yeah. obviously the joke is what led to him getting mad. But, you know, I don't know. Like if, but if then the, he if, outright says he would have charged us more. Yeah. I, mean, I would have charged more. Yeah. It's like, well, it's Jesus. I mean, come on. So then he, like, literally yeah. admits, like, the whole reason why we're joking about him, and then he admits. That like yeah, I would charge a lot more. Well, there you go. So why are you mad at the like joke? Like him, like saying like joking about like you saying like oh you, you it cost you five thousand dollars to book you, and it's like hey, that's a load of shit. Okay, it's actually ten thousand. You asshole. yeah. Now, yeah I, exactly. I I think Ryback is probably about three to five thousand dollars, like a legitimate probably three to five thousand is what I'm and guessing. You know what the sad part is, I don't think he's worth it. Look at his his character and and everything. You know, I'm not talking about the character he portrays, but his no. actual you know self worth. Everything that comes out of his mouth has been proven, you know, to, to either be fabricated well, or here's you know, what a lie. In defense of him, what I'll say is his worth to be booked as a wrestler is separate than that. Just because we, oh, just, as a wrestler, no, yes, but no, legit. Just, just because we called him a hypocrite, just because I think he's a bit of a hypocrite. See, and I don't mind that either. He's doing, he's entertaining, he's trying to entertain people on his show and be honest. That's fine. Well, that's what I'm doing. So don't get mad at me when I do it, when you do it too. That, that's my problem is I'm calling him out for being a hypocrite, nothing else. He can do whatever he wants, and that's fine. And I'm not even that mad. I'm just saying it's it's obvious that that's true. But, you know, I don't think that dim- diminishes his work that he can do in the ring, his name from WWE, his size, his commitment, all that stuff. How much would I pay Ryback? I'll, I'll, be, I'll tell you how much I think Ryback's worth. If I had a promotion and I was booking and I had to book and I wanted to book Ryback like really bad, like I really wanted to have Ryback show up, I wouldn't yeah. probably be able to go over three thousand. I would it would be below that. It would be somewhere like two thousand to three thousand dollars. That sounds. I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah, that's I would. I, I would do. Fair. I would probably do three thousand. And you know, because uh, he's still a fresh name for, for you know between this podcast and I mean he wasn't released that long ago. Yeah, right? no, he's no, good. I mean, no, no, Ryback is like legit. Like, he's, he's doing well for himself in the Indies at this point. But Ryback like, is, is a guy on the Indies who shouldn't be has, on the Indies. You know, the, the interview with with uh, oh. Well, Roman Reigns decided to change the finish in our triple threat or uh, three way tag match, you know, six man tag match. Excuse yeah. me. It was him, uh, John Cena, and Sheamus. So Ryback, Cena, and Sheamus at Elimination Chamber in 2013. Yeah. And Ryback just recently said, oh, well, Reigns uh, changed the, the, the ending. Cause... And then Reigns comes out on Jericho's podcast and says, oh, I heard Ryback's little shoot interview and explains the whole thing because Cena was about to face The Rock. And they thought it was better for The Shield to go over. Because they were the group, they were the team, and that made more sense for them. You know, they were a cohesive unit. And it's like every single time he has this shoot interview or says this, you know, thing for attention, it comes to light that it's not true. So how are you to believe him? Well, that's the thing about, like, I've noticed with a lot of WWE shoot interviews, and not saying that that all wrestlers are bullshit and, and they're faking it. But WWE does such a good job of protecting their business. I mean, re- realistically, there's going to be a lot of stories that we'll never truly know, you know, what the hell happened. I mean, that's that's you know, 
peas in the grand scheme of things, but it's, it, it is interesting how like you hear stories like this and you're like, well, this guy said this and this guy said that. It's like some, someone's obviously bullshitting here. And, yeah, you know, exactly. And, but, and we may never know. No, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, so you get a Vince McMahon I try and look at interview. it objectively, oh, which apparently, you know, there, there's that documentary in the works and there were some things they, they tried to have edited out of that. But, Connor, I'm actually glad you brought up McMahon because that's also something we wanted to address um, mm. with Vince McMahon and Mauro Ranallo. Yeah, uh, I heard about that. Yeah. I don't, what did you hear so far? Um, pretty much what I heard was Vince – and this is not really surprising. Vince kind of was pushy on Mauro because Mauro was not doing the same things that he wanted to from an announcer standpoint. So he was, I don't want to say bullying, but I mean, it's pretty much the only word I can think of. And that he was more kind of like the pundit and kind of pushing Morrow. And, and that's why Todd Phillips was involved. And just essentially Vince was not a fan of Morrow's commentating style. And that was kind of the catalyst for the beginning of the end of the relationship. And that's what pushed him out the door. Yeah, that's essentially everything I heard as well. Meltzer uh, came out, you know, yep. and basically said that Vince expected the Canadian commentator to simply be himself, and his commentary style he thought would would feel, uh, you know, be able to be a, a, a differentiate himself from other people. And as time passed, McMahon is alleged to uh, have changed his mind, and you know, just was no longer enamored by him. And I don't get it. It said that the boss is said to be frustrated by Morrow's style of play-by-play commentary. He wanted more character from Morrow, as where Morrow was just kind of focused on the match, and he made the matches feel more exciting. But I can see what they're what they're trying to allude to here, because Morrow wasn't, you know, the the you know, Jr. was was great calling matches, but he also. You know, he added a bit of flair and character to it. Moro just made you excited about what was going on in the ring, but he didn't really add that in between matches. You know, he wasn't the hype man that I think they thought he was going to be. He was great at play by play, um, but I don't think he had a lot of color and characteristics, you know, uh, traits that they were looking for. So. Well, that's fair, but I mean, work with the guy. Exactly. Give you know him a I mean? chance like, because he made every match feel special. You listen to him and he is just something else. He got you excited about what you were witnessing on TV. He got you. I mean, you know, I, I make the jokes and, and the impression about him. I mean, Christ, like he at least made me like he made me. I think there was like a tag team match. I think American Alpha versus Brizongo. <laughs> you normally wouldn't get him excited, but he was like talking about like how like it was important for uh, uh, Brizongo to get this win, and he was like, "It's the dance of destiny for Brizongo." Like these like clever like quibits, but it like it got you like pumped, it got exactly. you excited, and I don't understand why you would let someone with that much talent just slip through, through your fingers. You know, this reminds me of I don't know if you guys remember this. Remember when Joey Styles was on Raw after they fired Jim Ross, and then he like snapped <laughs> and cut a shoot on Raw. Yes, this is what that reminds me of. Like that, like yeah, I, everything I, that he says is exactly what relates to this situation. I can understand that, and it's surprising too, because you know Vince always had a reputation for having a, a flair for the eccentric, and and Moro really is that outlier in the commentator world right now. You know, like you said, he makes things feel special. His vocabulary, the way he enunciates, and his his tempo, everything about him is just very unique, and he has a, a certain way to captivate an audience, unlike anybody. Else else i've seen today in the mm. business problem is he doesn't work well with anybody so that's i mean well, that's, he, it's not that he that's does, oh, i'm sorry i'm sorry i take that back that's wrong he worked really well with daniel bryan he really did yes he, yeah he was oh, great at the cruiserweight was, classic yeah. that he, was Christ. amazing he doesn't but they he, played well with each other he doesn't you know, he doesn't do well with heel guys i don't think he gets that thing so that he he just i don't know what it is moro doesn't like if someone's well, I don't think like he understands you know what not, not not understand, but I don't think he's able to to you know identify as a face or a heel. I think he's just so used to calling the action in the ring that he's not worried about portraying a character. Yeah, you know? he's nowhere near. He just isn't that. He's very very good at calling the sport like it's a real deal thing, and it's great. And I love it. I love Moro. That's so it. Happy. You just said it. He made it feel real. Yeah, that's a perfect way to describe what Moro did. But he made everything feel. He brought this gravitas towards it where it felt real. You know, I've always tried. I never even heard uh, Morrow until the last year. Uh, until the uh, until well, I had heard him a little bit, but I really never focused on him as like when I do commentary. Like I've never focused on like, wow, well, I want to be like Ronaldo. Um, I heard him in the Berto Porter boxing match. I. And- you know that was huge. I've seen him in Ultimate Fighting, but I've heard him in Ultimate Fighting, but I, I never was like I'm going to be like that. You know, my all my influence comes from way way before that. 
but everything I do, like I get, I try to get intense. I try to p- portray what's going on and, and like make it exciting. But I don't have the vocabulary that he has um, at all. But but you know, I do have the ability to sort of like react to the person next to me. And while I might, I'm missing the extensive vocabulary that Morrow has and, and a lot of the knowledge that he has, I I'm able to speak with the person next to me. Morrow doesn't have that. Uh, most of the time he did with Daniel yeah. Bryan because Daniel Bryan was speaking his language because they were Daniel Bryan was also treating it like it was a sport and Daniel was like well you know it was like I was watching you know candle pin bowling as a kid or you're watching like some tournament as a kid that you happen to put on ESPN and like the commentators are so good that you actually can watch it and you're like oh and you know and remember Ted this was like last month when at the PGA whatever he broke his wrist exactly. and, and you could see he had wrist issues and now he's going to make this 100 foot putt or whatever the fuck, and then you're like, wow, so they've already painted that picture for you. Um, they broke down every move, the history of everybody in the – because we didn't know, you know – uh, well, I mean, we knew, but not everybody, I, I can say. But, you know, like they talked about T.J. Perkins, where he came from, what he did, what yeah. he accomplished. But they also went deeper and delved into his, you know, his history more so and his move set, his mindset – you know, they, they, they built up his character because we only had a, a single match to introduce this person without any backstory. So the commentators were the backstory for these characters. And I like you said, they sold it on such a, a technical level. And they really it wasn't. Well, they really sold it well. And they both, you know, added to it because they were both kind of like almost like marks, like in a way for it. Like they were like, you know. Like, what a move. And, you know, Daniel's like, you know, his head right now, I guarantee you I've been hit like that. And my ears would ring an entire day. I guarantee you right now TJ Perkins can't hear a thing. You know, and then more and all, oh, that's suplex now. Like, and they just, and it just, you're just like, wow, like, what's going on here? Um, yeah. And it's very. Morrow has such an affinity for the business that he knows every move under the sun. I mean, he, he was able to name some stuff that I've never even seen before. Yeah. And he knew everybody's finishing maneuvers. Like, he studied it as if it was, you know, life or death. And like you said, Brian having that that you know experience in the ring, combining those two was was magic, and <laughs> I wish they continued that going forward. One thing that I, I always attribute to Morrow and, and and any commentator really, Jr. like any of the good ones, is that they should have the ability because realistically, you know, wrestling is mostly visual. Where you know the people only the TV obviously are the only ones going to be able to hear the commentators. What I always attributed to be a good commentator is that they have the ability where you could turn the TV on in the room and not pay attention, and they would say something or you know they would accentuate something that would make you want to rush back to the TV and see what the hell just happened. Yes, or you could even visualize it with your eyes closed. Right, yeah. that or that too. I mean, I know Vince is not usually huge on that, like, but, no, no, they, but to they, me, it's but, enhancing they, it though. It's like it really enhances it. Like it's not like oh yeah, of course like, he just took his damn like, you know he yeah. just took his damn head off or what you know it's, like, it's over exaggeration. True, but the point is is that you know Morrow had that in my opinion that gift of being able to, like again the enthusiasm, the excitements, and the eccentric you know eccentricity. To to turn your head and get your yes. attention, like whoa, he just he just flipped. Like, who, what did he just flip out at? Let's just let's take a look. What the hell? Oh, holy shit, that was a huge move. Well, all, and then et cetera and so forth. Also, with the matches being sometimes being just boring now, it's like you really can make a match that's like casual or to run of the mill uh, seem somewhat exciting too. I mean, that's a big. Blair deal has always to said that that commentators make or break matches sometimes. And that's the God's honest truth, because we look at Raw right now, and half the time I'm like, oh, i got to shut this off. Oh, my God, I can't believe (laughs) I have to watch this. Cole was asleep. Yeah, Cole was asleep last night, and Booker (laughs) T wasn't believing any of the bullshit. He was rolling his eyes and, and like... So just you know, disheartened about to, the entire situation. I don't know what these announcers are like backstage, like the Rich Brennans, the Michael Cole. Now I, I don't know if anybody's fighting for anything, but I would demand it. Like I, I mean, like I, I am, you know, I don't tweet things out because like, cause if I was on Raw, I mean, I will plug all your commercials. I will plug whatever the fuck I'm supposed to say. I'll even say some of that goofy shit. But I am going to entertain these people and get the ratings up. And, you know, I mean, if I was in the office and people were giving me any sort of pushback on, like, what I was doing, I mean, dude, I would be breaking stuff on the floor. I'd be, like, fucking smashing something. I, I mean, I'd be just screaming. I am going, do you want the ratings to go up? Yes, you do. I do, too. I am going to go out there and get the fucking ratings up. And in six weeks, if I haven't done that, you can punch me in the face. JBL can rape me. You can throw me off a fucking cliff. You can fire me. But God damn it, give me six weeks, and I will have these ratings up. 
and like I would exactly. smash things. And I mean, like I, 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 and that's what they. I feel like they need somebody like that because Moro is great as he is. Did Moro go back and yell at people? Moro probably just went, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's. I mean, is that what they're doing? Is that what Cole's? I mean, I don't know what they're doing now. I mean, Cole, Cole seems has like balls. a yes man too, and you know, JBL no, I mean, doesn't I, give two shits. He's one of the good old boys. Well, Cole He's has overseeing all the Cole, commentators. Yeah, Cole is running. Yeah, Cole runs the the guys. I mean, to be yeah. That's true. So, but I do you honestly picture him to be standing up and fighting for? No, uh, no, 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 no. But, but yeah, but it does make. I don't think. Cole, I, I don't honestly, think Cole. it's going to be another one of those aspects of WWE that when Vince is gone, I'm. It's going to be very interesting to see exactly what, how, how this is going to, you know, how the landscape is going to change. Cole doesn't want to be I, out there. I miss the days when there was Nitro, just for the fact I didn't even watch WCW, but at least when there was competition, that WWE always had to bring their A game. You know, I wish that that happened today. I wish there was a promotion like you know, TNA or WCPW or somebody that the, you know ROH, you know, that that was able to at least steal some of WWE's audience for just a little while, just to bring back a sense of the Monday Night Wars, just enough so that they would 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 have the the, the drive to try again. I feel like they're so complacent at this point, and they're like, "Oh, you don't like it? Well, what else are you gonna watch? Oh, you don't yeah, you it's... don't like going with it? Well, guess what? Too bad." And because they have the network, they're like, "Oh, well, you got a shitty pay per view. Well, it was only ten bucks. It wasn't sixty. So stop your crying." Yeah, it's sad to say they call we'll their never, fans crybabies. Well, then they have to we'll deal never, with all the we'll different never fans. see a uh, we'll never see another com- uh, an even competition to WWE ever again. No, it's sad, there's, but there's yeah. no way. The no. only way you'll see anything happen is again if the viewership drops to like a million or eight hundred thousand or something, and and then by then the the crowd is all in one. All one brain pattern, you know what I mean? Like if uh, yeah, either either all of us are still here, and then we're the only ones left, or if all the casuals are the only ones left, or whatever, or they create a new audience that starts watching because of something, you know, that's the only way that things will change. And then uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but I just know that. I mean, SmackDown. Look at their ratings are declining. They were down by what five hundred thousand last yeah, week. Went down and all people say, "Oh, what about the NBA final? NBA finals, my ass." You know, people aren't going. And and rushing to watch you know game two or whatever it was you know it's not that's not reason enough to lose half a million people I'm that's sorry that's a lot of people yeah it was um by the way I I believe Michael Cole does not want to be there Michael Cole does not want to be on Raw he wants well, to be he working. said in an interview a while back that he wanted to take more of a backseat backstage position similar to what Road Dog does yeah. and okay I mean he does it on SmackDown he does it. You know, everywhere else, he's the one that, run, you know, he's running the commentators on SmackDown. So, you know, he doesn't he doesn't want to be on Raw. I can tell by looking. I, listen, maybe he does. Maybe I am wrong. And maybe Cole would say, are you kidding me? You don't think I want to be on television for millions of people? You know, I'm sure Cole might say something like that. But I, he, to me, I don't think he wants to be there. I mean, I think he wants to be in the WWE and he wants to, you know, do the background work and help people develop. And goddamn it, Michael Cole, if you're listening, please hire me and bring me in there and train me. <laughs> like, I will be your tutor. I will learn everything I can from you. Uh, I, I get your point of that because you see him on Raw and he's very different compared to like uh, what was it? Last? The UK tournament. He yes. looked yeah. so different in the UK tournament. He, happy. Like he, he looked- felt passionate again. He felt like he had that that oomph back. In you know his why? Step. Do you know why? Because there was like almost no. Anything to, to there was no rundown of no all governor these on things. his back. Yeah, yeah exactly. Raw the was like was away. It's like Raw is like you know open show. Say this open show that cue to this cut to that. Remember that we're gonna tell you to do this. Hit this commercial. Hit that line. Make sure to say this this time. Don't say that. You know he, no he was in the UK and it was like oh you know I, I, we do whatever you do you know do whatever you do like we just make sure to plug exactly. these few things I guess like and the, you know that's why he was happy because it was like ooh like it's like an actor who always plays like a funny comedian guy but then f- finally he gets a role where he's like the Joker or something you know what I mean he like, gets to be taken serious yeah. Heath Ledger gets the Joker role and is like ah now I can really show people what I can do this exactly. isn't good boy next that's door yeah. Great analogy there. I would I would kill to see you know both of you. Raw goes live, the pyro goes off, and I hear both of your voices. You know, I would be so stoked. Not just because I know you, but like the the, the passion and uh, the abilities that both you have. You know, it would be unbelievable. I, I think I, Joe. I think I said this before. I think Joe would make a great heel commentator. Oh, absolutely. And I could be like the strict babyface one, and we yeah, could just you argue with stuff, Decker. I think that know. would be. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd if you be watched fun. any of the Justin stuff, I love that. Um, you know, because I'm yeah, old, and oh, that was where I saw it. Yeah, that, that was that, I was like I saw it somewhere before, and you guys were like on fire. I love the commentary. I actually felt like Cole. Yeah. I actually feel like Cole because I've been calling so many things because I've been doing the play by play straight up, like you know, off the rope, clothesline. Oh, you got to you know. And, but then um, 
when I had when I found out Justin could do play by play, I was like wicked excited because I was like, well, we well he couldn't do heel really, like it didn't sound right to me. Um, it was all right actually, but he was just doing better at play by play. So I was like, well, somebody I'll I'll do the heel. You know, yeah, you and I'll be the, the heel. heel slash color, and, and I never did that. And so, like, real, I mean, really. So I was just like, well, I'll just be like, because a lot of times, like, I, I like joking and shit. Sometimes I'll shit on Leah. Like, we'll be at home, and I'll just make fun of her, and she'll be like, "Why are you making fun of me?" I'm like, "I'm just kidding." I'm like, I just like to be a dickhead, <laughs> even though I'm not a dickhead. Yeah. So I'm like, well, it works out well for your character, and it's what you 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 know you strive to when you people loved, especially back in the day when your channel was first you know garnering attention. People love to call in and mess with you just so you would cut a promo on them. Yeah, I remember that. You that know, those, like those were the days where people would purposely try, how much can I piss off Joe Cronin to get him to snap? You know, they'd call in and talk about your mother, and then instantly you'd go off on them, and they loved it. You know, and the audience loved your, your bouts of rage, too. I mean, that's what people look forward to. You know, I, so many people, Scott sends me, jo, you know, Joe's 2014 Royal Rumble review or 2015, you know, all the old stuff all the time. He's like, oh, this one's my favorite. And somebody else says, this one's my favorite. And Sean likes this because they like to see that that just energy that passion that rage my, and dude. it's true you know you you two would be great and i would love to see dave rose as an analyst on there too have him yeah. be the guy backstage interviewing people with that bit of uh his mannerisms you know that 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 real dude, we'll just start a company slash, yeah i, I could see him being like lawler where he's He's serious where he needs to be, but then like he can sneak in little heel shit every now and then. I think go listen to the to the two K um, play by play that we did. Me and there's a bunch of it on my channel with Justin, me and Dave, and it's it's hilarious. It's but, great, uh, dude. The the best thing on that Gold Dust one, the Gold Dust versus Teddy Goods one, the best thing on there is when um, he gets knocked over or whatever, and it's almost a, a, a three count, and we're like, oh my god, and I go, and you hear me go, oh. I go, wow, did you see that, Bailey? Look at that. And Teddy Goods is right back to his feet. And Teddy Goods is, like, shaking and struggling to get up. And, and, <laughs> and Bailey's like, he, he, he can't even get up. I'm like, he, he's almost up. <laughs> like, he's like, fine. Like, he's, that, that, right. that reminds me of, like, the um, uh, my, one of my favorite lines is the, um, the what do you call it? Um, oh, God, I can't remember. The, the barbershop where yeah. John threw Marty. Yes. And uh, <laughs> fucking um, you see uh, that? He tried Bobby to Heenan's like, See, he tried to escape. He jumped through the window. He jumped through the window, yep. <laughs> it's just great that it happens, and you're like, oh, my God. Like, and he goes through the glass, and then, and then he chimes in like, oh, did, did you see that gorilla? He, what a, what a, what a, he was like, what a wuss or something. He was like, what a, what a, what did he say? Like, like, the gorilla's like, oh, they're going to be friends. He's like, nope, they're going to betray each other. And then they're like, they hug. He's like, ah, oh, I see. I knew they were going to be friends. And then he kicks him and goes, I knew it. I knew it all along. <laughs> yeah, and they were going to do that. Yeah. Then he's like, did you see that gorilla? Marty Jannetty tried to jump through that window to get away from Shawn Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> and you figure too. I mean, this list is out today. Uh, the, the 2008 list the company sent out uh, banning certain terms and words. It just keeps ever growing and being expanded. Did they but if you notice, they don't words? say hospital. They say medical center. Uh, you're not allowed to say hospital. You're not allowed to say D uh, DQ faction. You can't say the title is online. Talent. Interesting shot. Backstage feud. Fans. Title changing hands, belt strap, the business, our industry, pro wrestling, wrestling, pro wrestler, house show, war, performance, performer, or they now they allow you to say sports entertainment again, but for a while they didn't want you to do that. But McMahon doesn't care about his perceived ridiculousness. These are just things that he, he doesn't want. And, uh, you know, WrestleMania was the granddaddy of them all. Now it's the showcase of the immortals. You know, it, it, it's just you couldn't refer to uh, WrestleMania this year in Florida by what was it the the Sugar Bowl or whatever the hell it was Citrus Bowl. You had to say something else. Uh, you know, and it's just like, it, yeah, I, th that's my no, no, no. You had you had to you had to call it the Citrus Bowl. You couldn't call it the World uh, Camping World Stadium. You know, yeah, it, things it, it, things like that. That's micromanaging to such a T. I mean, some some of those phrases I can understand, but others it's just like, come on. Yeah, like Roddy Piper says, you know, when you when you have the answer, Mr. McMahon will change the question, and and that that's it. You know, the he has such control, and I think that's part of the reason why Moro was having a hard time adjusting too, because he would say things at times, and then think about how many times he must have been reprimanded or ostracized, or or you know, because he said the word wrestling or he said the word well, he, belt he or strap. Yeah, or, he, 
he took a jab. I don't know if it was a jab, but he he was calling a match. At, I think it was Japan or whatever. Yes. It, it, the thing he just came back to, he's like, former pro wrestler Moira, does that say does that, does that sound good? Does feel to say great that again? You know, or something like that. Yeah, like, it feels great to it, say that again. You know, yeah, be able to say that again. It, it's just. Uh... It's an unfortunate, you know, stifle of, of creativeness, basically. You know, they, they, yeah. they just, they don't allow people to flourish, and it, it baffles me. Um, speaking of something else that I find a bit odd is we originally reported Ember Moon being injured, Joe. Apparently, it's all at work. She's not actually injured. Her crying ringside with her shoulder and everything, um, it's just an angle, and it was all to Good. build up heat. Uh, same kind of uh, heat that Seth Rollins or attention, excuse me, Seth Rollins received with his knee injury. You know, they they redid the spot of his knee buckling at Mania, and uh, basically they're they're trying to see how this plays out on television. But they're they're basically trying to build up, you know, uh, Asuka being defeated soon enough. So they're they're hoping that this will give Ember kind of a, a shot in the ass needed to to make her more of a babyface. Yeah. They'll give her some sympathy, and um, you know. It's you know they say here that it's widely anticipated that the Empress of Tomorrow will be promoted to the main roster soon, and uh, you know it, it's just I, I don't know I, I I find it a little bit odd that they would go with an injury angle like this, but I'm just glad that it was a work. Oh, she, I, the injury was a work. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing was an actual work. I mean, the oh, NXT wow. Women's Divisions got me kind of worried. In general, because and this is no disrespect to Oscar Ember Moon, but I don't think two women a division can make. Uh, I mean, they have they have depth in the women's division because I, you know I, I Liv Morgan I think is doing great, but there's they, I think they need to develop a lot more women. F- I don't want to say faster, but just more prominently like they had before. Which it's a fucking catch up game, and that's the worst part of the whole thing. Yeah, I mean they lost a lot when they they sent up you know the, everybody but Bailey and. Uh, you know, now even even per se, I, I, Bailey isn't performing well, and the, the main roster women's division on both sides isn't doing well either. I mean, Nia Jax goes from you know defeating Charlotte to losing the Fatal Four Way to not even being on Raw last night. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not a fan of Bailey stuff right now, to be honest with you. No not, one is n- not digging. No it. Like, one is. I thought, when, I thought I when she came her. up, she was gonna have her ass up a rocket, uh, you know, rocket up her ass and just like take off. But Me just, too. Same thing with Sasha. Yeah. None of this is working out right. Nope. Patrick Farrell, a uh, friend of the show, he actually went ahead and he tweeted Nia Jax last night. And he said to her, didn't feel like participating last night, trying to be different. And he said, oh, yeah, you're not like most girls. My bad. And she actually liked the tweet. And I thought that was <laughs> funny. But, uh, you know, so shout out to Patrick for saying that to her. But he's like, yeah, you're not like most girls. My bad. And I thought that was just just so perfect to say because you're not being an asshole you're not being rude but it's a great point you know here you are you're supposed to be this this powerful force that shouldn't be reckoned with and they're steamrolling you they're they're you know she got taken out at mania first and she she hasn't really had the the build-up that she deserves bailey needs sasha to to save her at every turn charlotte's a robot and the only one that i'm really enjoying is alexa bliss they had becky lynch return for essentially no reason I think she, when she came back, she should have grabbed the belt. It would have brought a little bit more to the SmackDown women's title to have her, you know, or at least had decent matches with Alexa Bliss, but we didn't even really get to see that. It all ended up being a six or fatal four way or a six way or, you know, it, it just, uh, everything felt rushed. And now here we are, and Sunday we have Bailey versus Alexa Bliss, and rumor has it that Bailey's holding the title till SummerSlam, but I hope Alexa uh. Bliss takes it from her. Because the Queen Charlotte is now on SmackDown. Your peacock lesbian robot queen is dominating Tuesday nights. <laughs> it just it, Oh, God, that peacock killed me. You know, Caw. <laughs> Caw. They're just in a sad state of affairs right now, and, and it, it's it's an easy fix, you know? They just SmackDown's an easier fix than Raw. Raw, you got some, you got, you got some work to do. That, that is true. Raw's going to take a little bit more work, but... It's it's not that far off. I mean, they've done nothing with Emma. They had her for 16 weeks wait to debut as Emmalina. You know, we've we've discussed this to to beat a dead horse even you know more dead. But now she's finally back as her badass self, and they've done nothing with her. Nothing. You know, they're doing the whole Dana Brooke thing, which eh, I, I I I at least give them credit for at least maybe having some sort of minimal feud, but eh. Exactly. There's no reason to care. Why would you? I would I, honestly, if I was booking that, I would have had 
Emma tried to recruit Dana Brooke like they did before, like you know, had like their partnership before. Dana at least stands her ground, and says, "No, I'm going to do things on my own." Emma keeps posting her, you know, like pushing her and pushing her and pushing her, and then finally says, "Fine, you know what? I got a new friend," and hires like Nia as like a bodyguard or something. And that would have worked <laughs> great. Yeah, Joe, I don't know about that. you, but the only thing I enjoyed from Raw was Alexa Bliss. She's hot on the mic. Yep. She she, and and she's not a ten out of ten, but certainly close. I mean, she's up there. She's she's great. Yeah, Alexa Bliss was the best thing about Raw. Besides, I mean, I did like Strowman a little bit, and even though it was like a weak thing, um, but uh, yeah, she kills it on the mic. Everything she says, like it's like clearly thought, some of it's thought out, but she just sounds like it's all natural coming out of her mouth. Everything she says is natural. She also nails it; like she doesn't stumble over her words and stuff. So when she sort of starts to rattle off, she has a, w- a way she's going. But I think she can also improvise too. So it's really nice to listen to her talk. It's she's really Absolutely. good. Absolutely. She, she can be unhinged and off the cuff, and, and she always is believable. And I think that's something that a lot of the women are lacking. Hey, I'll be right back. Uh, talk, uh, continue on. I'll be back in like one minute, okay? No no sweat. But I think that that's a huge factor that a lot of the women are missing today is that, you know, believability. That, that, you know, Bailey doesn't sound like anything more than a super fan. Sasha is no longer the legit boss. Naya's not a credible threat. That, you know, it's hard to believe that any of these women are actually fighting for something, so... No, I, I agree. I think that, you know, uh, I mean, their characters are there. It's not that the, the characters aren't there. It's the way they're booked. Exactly. And if, if you if you strategically book them the right way and think long term, which is another big thing I think WWE has problems with, is long term booking. Uh, they might have a better shot of, of really getting that payoff. And I think that's the biggest problem, at least from what I can't tell. Obviously, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors as far as their writing style and their writing staff. But genuinely, from what I've seen, they don't book i'm not even talking like you know i'm not even talking like uh like a year i'm not even talking like that far in advance i'm just talking like two three months you know as far as where you're going what you want to do and what the goal is and then work backwards that's the way i've always booked stuff and that, that's just the way i think that they need to again from what i've seen on tv that's where their key area of improvement is yeah i mean you know there's just that that that's a great statement, honestly. And like you said, behind closed door, we're, we're not sure exactly what's going down. Um, but, I mean, you know, really, they, they, they have the talent. And I've said this a hundred times. But it, it's just, it, it befuddles me. I, I don't know how they go ahead and, and just they can't get it right. I mean, they've demonstrated to us before that they're able to achieve greatness. We're, we're able to have women and men that we can get behind and enjoy thoroughly. And I, I want to boo somebody because, you know, we're supposed to. I, I miss the days we had the faces, we had the heels, and everybody kind of fell into their cookie-cutter roles, per se. Like, even right. when they started to lean more towards the tweener, you know, they, they got away from the heel and face things. Nowadays, it's like, you know, you're, we're booing the faces and cheering the heels, and it just it, – it's, it's bizarro land, and it's not supposed to be this way. Well, it's tough when you have fans who are in on it like us who – know what's going on and we're we're seeing it we're seeing it from the performance side rather than the face value and in the, the kayfabe dead and all that stuff so that's that's kind of hard to do in that regards as well too because then you kind of question like okay are you booing this guy because you legitimately don't like him as a character or are you booing this guy because he's a dick in real life or are you booing him because he sucks all throughout every aspect of of, of humanity like it's it's legitimately sometimes hard to differentiate that uh that line sometimes and sometimes WWE is able to blur the lines very well uh, they've done that before um, very, very well. But other times it's like, eh, yeah, it, it's 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 tricky. Um, but, you know, even from just like the performance aspect of it, uh, you know, and also I think part of it, too, is without getting too much into de- depth and detail here, I think society as a whole, too, has also changed drastically and the audience has changed. Uh, when would you, you know, think back like 20 years uh, in superhero uh, superhero genre. I know this is getting off topic a little bit, but you would never I'm have thought to you. see. You would never have thought to see a movie about villains, no, right? You wouldn't, right? Have. And look what was one of the biggest box office successes for WB this year: Suicide Academy Team. Award winning. <laughs> yeah. So it just you know who everyone loves the Joker more than they love Batman. They love the villains sometimes more than they love 
the heroes. Because typically they're more interesting. You know, that, well, that's, that's the truth. You know, exactly. the heroes, the, the truth, justice, and the American way. You're like, oh, God, yeah. you know, choke me with a stick. Let's get this on and over with. <laughs> right. But I think that's also a part of it, too. So, I mean, they just – they just need to know how to adapt, and some I think some areas they've adapted very well, but others, I think they definitely need a lot of improvement upon. So, you know, there, there's ways to kind of get like what you what you want to get across, and there's ways to kind of man, you know I don't want to say manipulate, but kind of uh, str- it's all about strategy. And I think I, I don't know what WWE strategy is. I think that they have bits and pieces for certain things here and there, but I think long term they don't. I'd be I'd be very surprised. I actually I wouldn't be surprised if they did not have SummerSlam penciled. I would. I would at least have like the, the top two tier feuds already penciled in for SummerSlam. I'm not saying guaranteed, but just an idea that we're okay, we're gonna try and go towards this direction and let's connect A to B to C to D and get to eventually this point. And so what you know, and this is just me, I like I would like to drop little subtle things throughout the months so that way when you get to the announcement of okay this is going to be the match at SummerSlam which is again arguably their second biggest pay-per-view of the year it just means that much more and that's the other part too is just the you know uh matches sometimes matches need that you know I think a lot of matches need that build and that development and that background one thing I said on Raw was the Cruiserweight match Yes, per- Perkins and was it Perkins and Neville against Gallagher and Aries? I love that match, and the reason I loved it was because there was you know the, the baby faces stormed the ring and they boom without any warning just attacked the heels. Absolutely, and it was believable because there was a story behind all four. Of them. Hey, look at that! You yes. know everybody has yeah, their motivations and a rhyme and a reason to do something. What exactly? So if you have at least that history, I'm not, I'm not saying it was a perfect one. I mean Gallagher is kind of like the little bit of like the fourth, you know, the third wheel in this whole thing. But there's history with all three: Perkins turning heel, lining with Neville, Aries is fighting Neville for the crew. There's at least enough story there, so that's what made it really more intriguing. And if they just did stuff like that on a, you know, across the board. You you have some, especially with the roster they have, you have some potential for some good stuff. Yeah, I exactly. think it was my second or third favorite thing was the cruiserweights uh, on Raw because it went a little bit longer than usual. Maybe if I remember, maybe I'm crazy. Well, yeah, and then like I said too, the it was just it to me it was booked very differently. It was much more intense. I mean, not to say that their cruiserweight matches on Raw weren't intense, but there was something behind them. So now you had some gravitas to it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, exactly. One of the things I wanted to bring up too was that you know Alexa Bliss last night, her ability to shut down the what chance was great. I, I you know that was one of the things that I enjoyed. She's able to flip the script, you know, as where Charlotte gets rattled by the what chance previously, and other wrestlers, you know, either try to speed up their cadence and and talk a little bit faster. All Alexa did was say, "Alexa Bliss is the best." Say what? And everybody what? And she goes exactly, and the crowd stopped. You know, she had, she's able to, to take, you know, something and turn it on its head. And I love it. So it was awesome. Yeah. She's, she's so good. It's, it's, it's great to watch her. Um, she keeps me entertained every time she comes out there. I love it. Um, which is too bad for like, I don't know what's going on, but they need to, I actually, I didn't mind Sasha. She, she, to me, she was better too. Like once she got away from Bailey and she was like, I forget what she said. Like Alexa Bliss was trying to leave, and then and then Sasha was like, bam, she waffled her, and then st- did I she I like legit that. hit her? She got she got her pretty it good. Looked it looked like yeah, yeah. Because I thought I saw a droplet of blood under her nose. Well, it was whatever it was. It was awesome. It made Sasha look badass. Then the match started. I liked that. You know, everybody rolled their eyes, and Sasha came out with Bailey, and they were doing their whole like, yeah, Bailey, I'm Sasha. But like it was, um, but I liked how it the match started it wasn't sometimes those parts are like lame where the girl slaps her bad or it's like it looks stupid but uh mm. sasha like clobbed her and it looked good to me so i enjoyed that um i don't know man is that it i think we should get out of here i think we gotta end the show but uh is there anything yeah. other, uh, smack uh, down later tonight that should be interesting yeah they're <sighs> gonna have that beat the clock tag team challenge tonight that's the first ever tag team beat the clock challenge yep um and also nakamura is supposed to have an interview oh, so yeah, he's uh, opening the and show. uh charlotte and naomi for the women's title yep so it so, should be an action i episode. will win the championship from naomi <laughs> no longer will you feel the glow <laughs> <laughs> you will be mine oh really quick kenny omega acted uh you know, and responded to Seth's new finisher. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, and you know, he basically said, you know, 
him using the rain trigger, he said, well, at least I still have my entrance music. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That's great. <laughs> and then uh, a little so bit great. later, he said, to clarify, I'm not upset. The thievery of late is blatant and funny, but anyone is free to put their own spin on stuff. I'll be doing the same with a little, like, cool emoji, you know, the sunglass smiley face. He should start mm-hmm. doing the pedigree. So, yeah, he did be... do a better Terminator entrance. Ah, yeah. yes, he did. He killed it. Wrestle Kingdom, that's for sure. Well, guys, uh, check out the links in the description box down below. Again, if you're going to use Amazon, use my link, and I will get credit for the sales. Mario Kart's coming out. Uh, anything on there, though, that you get, plus there's specific links. And if you want the free audiobook, just click the link below. It's a free audiobook for you guys for listening uh, to the show from eStories. That's down below. And WWE Shop as well. If anybody's going to buy anything from the WWE on the WWE Shop, use my WWE Shop link down below as well. Uh, WWE Save 5 save you five bucks on $25 or more orders. Uh, plus the link is down below and then I'll get credit for your sale there too. So all my affiliate links are in the description box down below. Uh, also, if you really want to support the show and you love what we're doing, that we're doing over our shows, uh, support on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin show. Make sure to check out Connor's channel, youtube.com slash okfaber. And he's at okfabe on Twitter. And um, Jake is at countdown ended on twitter and i'm at joe cronin jcs on twitter and that is it we'll see you tonight live after smackdown tomorrow night should be out of nowhere wednesday night and then i don't know what i'm doing thursday i'm sure i'll make some videos and then we'll also have a payback preview and prediction show up at some point Mm -hmm. so yeah and friday night will be monetized this i am and i am going to be doing wrestling i'll be doing commentary in wareham massachusetts uh next saturday so this saturday coming up uh I'll be in Wareham, Mass. So if anybody's around that area, come on out and watch the wrestling. And uh, more details on that coming. And that's it. We'll see you in the next video. And I'll see you tonight live for the SmackDown review. Bring it for that shit. See you tonight. SmackDown will be amazing. (laughs) Box. I'm getting all kinds of heat for that, by the way. Box. I don't know if you've seen Twitter. (laughs) Uh, I just talked to Ken, though. It's funny. All right. Bye, guys. All right. Well, you guys know that times are tough on YouTube. Thank God there's Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Uh, tons of you guys really, uh, it's really awesome that you've all gone over there. We have over 100 patrons now supporting the show. You guys have come in clutch, and we're still looking to get there, and I think we can. I inter- interact directly with you guys through messages and polls, and you will get behind-the-scene videos and shoot videos on things that nobody else gets to hear, plus the bonus ones. Everything is over there, Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Uh, It's been great to talk to you guys over there and have the community that we have. So thank you so much for supporting. And if you haven't become one yet, get over there and become a member of the Cronin Club. I appreciate you guys for supporting the show.